All right, what's up, folks? So today is uh, October the 18th. I've been on a little bit of a elongated uh, vacation, so I am back. Um, man, yeah, it's been since like the fourth since I've been uh, really programming or doing anything much with trading. So anyway, I'm back at it today. I'm pretty much going to talk about uh, the importance of having like a break in your loop cycles um, or just being able to get out of a sequence of a block. Uh, because it can be it can be very important and i can't i can't express to you the number of ways that it's important but what we'll do here today is i'll just kind of show you a couple ways to get out of a get out of a block when you're kind of sorting through um sorting through some ideas so so one of the things uh one of the things that you can do is um like i said there is something called break which you can use for um you use Ah oh, man, I tell you, I'm, I'm sluggish. Use this for loops and uh, switch cases. Okay, use the break. And then um, you use return is use uh, for methods. Now there might be other ways that you can use this. This is how I know, right? And again, I'm not a professional programmer. Um, I'm not a professional programmer professional trader i'm not a financial advisor or anything like that so um everything that you get here it is what it is all right so what i'm gonna do the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try to figure out some way to um to make a method get started and when the method gets started then we will uh break out of the method for some reason i don't know um let's say if the time is here if the time is 12 15 on 10 18 so if time equals uh, 12, 15 on date, and date equals 124, 1018, um, then count plus equals one. So we'll start the count there. So we'll have a variable called count. And then we'll say if count, uh, it's greater than or equal to one, then count plus equals one. And that way we'll keep counting on count if count has already has started being equal to one. And the way we can check that is we'll do a print statement and we'll say uh, we'll have a string dot format. That way we can write a bunch of stuff out. And we'll say uh, the bar is this. And then, um, yeah, the bar is this. Uh, and then we'll do the count. The count is that. In the um, quotations, and then Um, the first one, zero, is bar date, time dot to string, and then we'll do the count, and then end that. Oh, we'll oh, close parentheses. Let's have, uh, we already got the variable. All right, get out of there. Verify that we need another parentheses there close that out okay so here you see um, when the time is 10 18 12 15 all right so it's printing on every single bar but when it gets to the bar of 10 18 at 12 15 that's when we're going to start the count being equal to one and so forth and so on Okay, All right. So you see, uh, the time is ten eighteen. The excuse me, the date is ten eighteen, and the time is twelve fifteen. All right. So at twelve fifteen, we start the count equal to one, and then from then on, we're counting. Uh, we're adding one to that count. All right. So nothing fancy going on there. This is just saying this bar is twelve fifteen bar, uh, and then from there, we're going to start. Start a method, right? So 
if the count is greater than or equal to one, we're gonna use the method on all these bars, right? So maybe for the next 10 bars. So we'll say that um, if count is greater than or equal to equal to one and count is uh, less than or equal to 10, then we're gonna do a function check bar name. Um, okay, and so a method I'm sorry and so we're gonna have a method uh, method check bar name method for check bar name again and so what we're gonna do is on every single one of these bars we're gonna check and see if it's a bear or a bull okay so if bear um then print bear if bull then print bull can we get away with that instead of printing on every single bar let's only print if the count is if we are within that 10 bars so if we're in between that first bar at 12 15 and that 10th bar you know 12 25 or so all right so we're gonna clear this and then we'll reprint okay so you see we started uh again we're starting at 10 18 uh the date 12 15 the time the count is one and that's a bear bar Right, so that first one, 1215 is a bear. That next one is a bull, you see? That next one is a bear, you see? The next one is a bull, you see? And just so forth and so on. Okay, so what we wanna do now by using some, using a break or something like that, um, which we really don't need to... What, what happens is you might have something all right check this out let's add the <clears throat> we're going to add the moving average i'm going to move it add a moving average because right now we only have nine period moving average okay, fine. all right so that's nine period moving average from pretty much all these bars are above the nine period moving average so if we said um also we want to print uh we could print over or under nine moving average but if we wanted to print something and stop the print or stop this method from happening then you could type in return okay so right now this is when this method runs, it's going to run that print statement. It's going to run asking if it's a bear statement, and then it's going to print if it is. And then it's also going to run asking if it's a bull statement, and then it'll print if it is. So watch this. If open is over the uh, non-exponential moving average, then print over all right all right so let's clear this actually let's do this so once we're going to clear print lock okay so then again we're going back up here all right so at the start of our run the date is 10 18 the time is 12 15 count is one it's a bear it's a bull it's a bear it's a bull okay and then you see so this is the first count second count third count fourth count fifth count by this fifth count we're getting an open over the nine period moving average and it seemed like we should have that prior to that to say if the open is over the nine period moving average is this the exponential it says it's the exponential my function here if I open the function x average 
open this. That's X average also. This is X average at the close. I think this is price. It's used to close also. Well, it's dependent on the input. So let's make sure the input says close moving average. Close nine pair moving average just place. Yeah. Okay. So, um, if open is over. If open is over the nine pair moving average. They're going to print over. So if this is the first bar, the open is under. Second bar, this third bar, the open should be over. So we should have it on the third bar. Hmm. So, because we have some interesting information, let's go ahead and print. The nine pair moving average. And then we'll have a space and then we'll print. Um, print the open. So on this third bar, like I said, the open is 58.9950 and the nine pair moving average is 58.9961. So this would be saying that the open is under. There must be a difference between this x this nine period exponential moving average here and what I have printed here. And I'm doing a show me. So I can't plot. Gonna plot the exponential, non-exponential. Disable this. Edit studies. That is customized. For some reason, looks like breaks is gone now. This guy. Style. Plot one is going to be a line. Okay. Alright, so that's my nine period moving average right there, right? But it looks similar to what we had with the with the other one. So I don't know what I had before, but for some reason, and because like I said, when I just tried to pull it back up, when I tried to pull it up on my chart, it wasn't even showing there. So I'm not sure how it disappeared or maybe I just uh, turned it off just a second ago. But either way, uh, on the third one on count three, we do have that it's over, All right? Okay, so everything seems to be lined up right now. All right, um, so let's get this back out of here. Print. And all right, so let's move back to looking at every statement. You see, um, the third bar is going to print bare, and it's also going to print over. Excuse me, if for some reason. If we got to the bear statement, we didn't want to do this or this. For some reason, the bear is very special, or maybe it's a pin bar, or maybe it's something else. It's very special. 
and we don't want to execute the rest of the method, then all you have to do is put a return, right? All right, so we're gonna say, if it's a bear, then we're gonna print. So we're gonna do a couple of things. So in order to do most, you know, more than one thing, then we need to, you know, either use a, a method or we need to use a begin end block. So we're gonna begin, we're gonna print, and then we're gonna return. Okay, so now when I did it, it got to the third one and it printed bear and it didn't print over. Remember, it printed over just a minute ago, right? So if we take out return, if we mute that out and I verify it again. Now, when we get to the third one, it will say over. I'm gonna undo that. And so with the return being in there, so the return takes it out of the it takes it out of the method. It returns uh, back to the main body from this local uh, this local method. It gets out of the method and comes back to the body. Okay, so that's one way that you can get out of your method. Now, if you are actually returning something out of your method, so if this is a say this is a string and you're returning something anyway, then I'm pretty sure you need to put something here, right? So if you return something anyway, let's see, print. Mm. Let's print. So if the count is between one and 10, then we're going to print whatever this returns. <clears throat> and this will return a string. And how, what string will it return? Well, if it's a bear, then we're going to, we're going to return bear. And we can put a string there because we put string here. If we wanted this to be true false, then we put boolean here. But we're gonna do a string. So string. And if it's a bool, then we're gonna print. We're not gonna print a uh, bool. We're just gonna return bool because it's gonna be printed down below in the main body. And return bool. Okay, and if open is greater than uh, the nine period moving average, then we're going to. Uh, instead of printing over right there, then return over. Right in. Okay. So now you see here we've got the. Um, We've got the 10 counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We've got a bear, bull, bear, bull, bull. Okay. Now, what happened here is you see we had a return. It's returning the bear. So once we come in here and we go into this method, boom. Now, whenever this is true, we're going to return bear through the method and back to the main body. So it doesn't go through the rest of this anyway. But now, like I said, sometimes you're going to want to go through every single one of these lines and only return for a certain reason. So depending on what you want to do, depends on how you set this up. And if you use a, uh, if you use a loop and just kind of loop through, you can, you can you can exit out of it with with a break uh, instead of a return. So let's see let's see here. Is there a way for us to to return this and to continue on through here? I don't think so. I don't think so because this literally is the. Um, is the way to exit is to exit all out of this local method. Okay. 
excuse me. Now, I'm just going to comment this out. And I want to show you something I was working on when I was preparing for this. Uh, when I was preparing for this video, I started on this. And I probably will continue with this. This is pretty much um, defining what each type of candle is. All right, so for here, I say if the top wick is greater than 80% uh, of the range, then it's like an inverter hammer. If the bottom wick is greater than 80% of the range, then it's a uh, bullish hammer. Uh, if the high is equal to the close and the open is equal to the low, and it's a bullish candle, then it's a bullish marabozu. Uh, and if, you know, it's the same thing, if it's, you know, a shaven candle, but it's a bearish candle, then um, it's a bearish marabozu. So actually that should be if the high is, this one would be if the high is the open, the high is the open and the low is equal to the close. Okay. Like I said, I just kind of got started on this, but um, you see what I'm doing here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a one statement. Clear print log. Okay. So it's just going through all of these candles and then it's qualifying what kind of candle it is. If it's an inverted hammer, if it's a bearish marabozu. And what I want to actually do is instead of returning the text here, I'm going to assign each one. Instead of it being like B name, <clears throat> I'm going to assign it a number. And so every candle type will have a number and then I'll have a like a master chart that gives me a corresponding candle type with the with the number and then that way I can you know put this into a spreadsheet or put this into some other um, <coughs> excuse me put it into a um, into an algorithm much easier than having the words written out because again programming and everything is ones and zeros it's not all these fancy letters all right so what i did to get this is uh, on every bar i'm running a method that method is here in b type and so we have an integer uh, variable x and so i start off with the variable x being equal to one and then i'm using a while loop which says that um while x is zero, excuse me, while x is one, and x is one because we just defined it prior to coming here. So while x is one, we're going to go ahead and carry out this block. Now, at the end of the, or and I think even put it at the beginning of the block, I put this at the beginning or the end of the block, but within this block, we go ahead and assign x equal to two so that when the block gets ready to be rerun, X is equal to two and it's not equal to one so that so the block will not run again so the block will only run one time and I have that done for a specific reason because when I uh, get to each candle I want to run all this one time and so what I'm doing is I'm going from top to bottom saying is the candle an inverted hammer no okay what well, is it a bullish hammer? No. Okay. What well, is it a bullish marabozu? No. Okay. What well, is it a bearish marabozu? No. And so it's just going to go from top to bottom. And if it is one of these, if one of these conditions is met, then it's going to assign B type that variable to be in the string inverted hammer. Okay. And that is actually in the main document, the main body, right? So I can access that. Um, it's in the main body, but I'm going to return it here because my method has a return type of string and I'm going to return that string and it's going to be the container for that string is going to be B type, that variable. Okay. But like I said, before it gets ready to go on and keep checking 
all these lines on every single bar, which it does need to do. Now, sometimes you will have uh, certain bars which may fit multiple criteria, but that's not what I'm looking for. I want every bar to have, um, I want there to be a definition for every candle type, which puts a candle in one of those spots, not multiple spots. Okay. All right. So, um, and like this will be the, and I might change this to a uh, single candle pattern, single candle, single candle pattern type. And then I might have another method for, um, two candle pattern type. And so I might run this run each of the method, each of the methods on every bar so I can capture whether or not there is a, well, I definitely want to figure out if there is a, um, uh, a, a candle name for each individual candle, but then if there's multiple candles, uh, a multiple candle setup, if you will, I want to capture that too. Okay. Um, but again, when you get here, you want to assign the inverted hammer string to the B type, which is also a string. And then you're going to break and this. Is what I was telling you before in a loop or in a K switch, you can use the word break. And the word break would take you out of this block. Take you out of this block. And then, so once you get out of that block, it'll carry you to the next, um, the next expression, which is here. So once you get B type equal to inverted hammer, it'll break you out of this loop, takes you to the end. And so the next thing for it to do is return that B type out of this method to the main body. Where does it return it to? Where the method was called from right here. So it prints it out. And that's how you get this print log. It shows you what each candle is. So I've got uh, a one for a doji. Like, let's look and see what the doji says. The way I the way I have it set up says that the body has to be a tenth of the full range, and the bottom wick and the top wick have to be within like ten percent of one another. So the top wick and the bottom wick have to be relatively the same height, and then the bot the middle excuse me the body has to be at really, least you know no more than ten percent of the entire range. Okay, so we got a doji at what time? 12 a.m. Of course, you know, you get those early a.m. hours, you have low liquidity, you have a lot of dojis. Um, okay, all right, so that's on 1016 at 12 a.m. Which way am I going? 1016. Uh, 12 a.m. This guy right here? That doesn't look right. I mean, this looks like a doji here. 1015 to 2310. 11, 10. Oh boy, this is too sinister. Ten fifteen at twenty three ten. Ten fifteen at twenty three ten, right here. That was defined as a doji. That's so that's perfect. But this ten sixteen at twelve a.m. Ten sixteen at twelve a.m. So the top wick, the bottom wick, excuse me, the body is relatively non-existent. So it, it, it is less than 10%. So that's correct. The top wick and the bottom wick I have to look up my definition of top wick and bottom wick. Um, says the bottom wick the 
bottom wick has to be between top wick I mean I think for some reason the way I have bottom wick and top wick set up that when you have a bar like this because there is no bottom wick it must be equal in the same thing Open this lesson close. Oh, uh, I, I mean, I have an, an idea why. Because the open and the close are equal. So I don't even know what it's calculating at that point. Because if open is greater than close, then it's going to do this. If the close is greater than the open, it's going to do this. But since neither one of those are true, I imagine that bottom wick is just equal to zero. And then it's saying is zero. And this is going to say the exact same thing. It's, it's going to do the exact same thing. All right. See, open greater than close. Um, so it's going to say a zero within 10% of zero and yeah, that's true. So I've got to figure out how to like when it's truly that doji, that flat doji. And I've got a. Hmm. I might just need to rewrite my definitions for bottom wick and top wick. If I do that, that's gonna. At this point, if I change the definition of these functions, that's gonna change all of my scripts, <laughs> all of my scripts across the board, and it may be for the better. Uh, so I need to consider that, but uh, I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, but I really will consider doing that because I'd rather move forward with um, good information with uh, with a good foundation than to move forward on a shaky foundation. No matter if it, if it feels right. Anyway, all right, guys. Um, about 30 minutes in. I guess this is okay. There's a good stopping point. Uh, I hope you got a little bit of something out of this. And... Um, yeah, happy trading. Happy programming. All right, I'm Eric. I'm out. Peace.